This is the tale of a wonderful road trip in the year 2012. On Saturday afternoon, I arrived in Philly, and you greeted me with your wall drug hat. What a treat. Where was your wall drug hat? Unfortunately, it was still sitting on my shelf at home. That, are we ready? Oh my god, he's got his wall drug hat. I should have remembered mine. Oh my god. Well, go back. Yes, I need to go back. I'll be back in a couple hours. Tomorrow morning. Then as we prepared for our drive, we sought out nourishment from your garden. That's right. We took with us a cucumber and a knife. That's all we had. All we needed for the road. We were tough. Don't mess with us. We got a Definitely. knife and we <laughs> got cucumbers. Now, although we anticipated that Scranton was going to be our first stop, we couldn't resist a side trip announced on a large sign to the world's largest general store. Unfortunately, when we arrived, our plea that we had driven a long way out of our way fell on deaf ears. Yeah, you couldn't convince that lady that to let us in, could you? No, she just wasn't buying it. You told her that we drove all this way just to go there. Right, I told her I'd come from Ohio, I think. <laughs> However, the side trip would not be a total loss. As we laughed at roosters chasing the chickens around the chicken coop, and we discovered that roosters do crow in the daytime. I think he wants to hunt that one, isn't he? Whoa. There was there was a chicken coop and then there was a small little road and then there was another chicken coop, right? There was. And what did that teach us? I think we've we found out that, that the chickens really do cross the road to get to the other side. They had like a farm in their parking lot, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And there were roosters and chickens there. Yeah, there were. And there was a chicken, if I remember, there was also, if I remember correctly, there was also some type of pier that you could get almost on, on like a diving pier. That was weird. It was like a pier to nowhere. It just was right there and didn't go anywhere. I got up on that. I almost you did. dived right into the yeah, road. Yeah, but your form was great. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so we arrived in Scranton, the electric city, shortly after dark. Who would have thought that this town would be jumping on a Saturday night for an Italian festival? We circled the town square before climbing back into the car to head towards Cooperstown. This would be the first of many nights of finding motels to be harder than we expected. Up and on our way Sunday morning. It didn't take long to recognize that we were in rural America on our way to and from Cooperstown. Cooperstown itself is certainly a baseball town, much like a baseball theme park. The Hall of Fame was fascinating, and I loved seeing the exhibits surrounding Barry Larkin's induction just a few weeks earlier and the tribute to the Big Red Machine of the 1970s. We even saw a, a Babe Ruth look-alike from Boston who happened to be visiting the Hall of Fame that day. Yeah, he was from Boston. Yeah, there's not a bigger rivalry than Boston <laughs> and the Yankees. Right. We found that out because we also saw him in the diner. Yeah, a diner at which we didn't stay. No, they were too slow, weren't they? Yeah. Baseball's too... always been kind of slow, huh? Really? I guess that's why they call it America's past time. <laughs> no. Off we went. We headed out of Cooperstown, and we soon realized we were in Amish country, passing horse-drawn buggies, roadside signs for children at play, and roadside signs warning children not to throw stones at buses. That was kind of funny. It was weird. <laughs> it wasn't long before we were in the Adirondacks, where we had a lovely lunch in a beautiful setting at the Oxbow Inn. I remember that. It was cool. And we needed the rest, as I recall. We've yeah. been driving a long time.
and then we followed up with a hike in a forest. Very cool. We finished the day in Burlington, Vermont, again finding the last room at a Marriott courtyard. Yay for points. I relaxed and you went on to Nectar's. So Nectar's really turned out to be a college bar. Yeah? Yeah. I ended up hanging out with these random college kids. I think I told them I was a little bit younger than I was. <laughs> Hung out with uh, them at the uh, the bar. We snuck downstairs because they were pretty much packed anyway. And then I ended up back at one of their houses. I didn't know that. Yeah, I ended really? up back at one of their houses, and we were just talking about random things. And it turned out that one of them was from Stowe, Vermont, which was right near Ben and Jerry's where we were headed the following day. And another one was from Acadia. Really? Yeah. And she's the one who told me, you got to climb the precipice. Oh, uh, we have her to blame. <laughs> we'll get to that. We will. Monday morning, we were off to Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream Factory. On the way, we encounter, encountered the smell of a skunk. And I might add, this was not the first time. Then a little sidetrack due to low tire pressure, requiring a lesson in how to measure air pressure and fill the tires. I would later buy you your own tire gauge. Do you know I later found out that I had two nails in my tires? Wow. We did that whole road trip of about 2,000 miles with two nails in my tire. And do you think you, the, the second nail was to try to keep the air from running out from the first nail? I don't know. <laughs> then Ben and Jerry's tour was educational and fun. And the ice cream was great. Do you remember the t name of that ice cream? Why, well, I know. I, it was the freshest tastiest ice cream I've ever had. I keep trying to remember what it was and I can't remember, but it was amazing. Breakfast slash lunch followed at a counter restaurant formerly known as Jamie's. That's right, the girl from Stowe told us to go there. That's right, I ate my whole sandwich. You kept half your hummus sandwich for an anticipated dinner. Oops, sorry. That's right. You crushed that sandwich, didn't you? I did. I did. The rest of the day was a road trek toward Acadia National Park in Maine. And, uh, oh, there's a nice one. Hold on. Are you handing we stopped to see the old man of the mountain in New Hampshire. But unfortunately, the old man had left the building. That's right. It, it crumbled years it earlier. It had collapsed. That's right. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. We then were able to hike up the Franconia Notch, enjoyed beautiful scenery from the top, and sat on the rocks. And what ha I remember you sitting on the rocks. Uh-oh. I now have a cracked phone face to match yours. Like son, like father. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry to lead the pack on that one. Really? We then traveled the Kankamanga Highway across the White Mountains of New Hampshire, enjoyed the rushing water of a riverbed, and we were amused by John, the small boy who was seemingly stranded on the rocks. <laughs> I remember. John was this little black yeah. fl fat kid. Yes, that's right. Who was stuck about chest deep in the water. Right, right. And couldn't get out. No, I think he thought he was very cool on the way out into the water. Oh, little fat kids are the funniest. Yeah. The drive that day was long, but we arrived at our campground at Acadia to a nearly full moon shining on the water below. Enjoyed the fire we built and set up camp for the night. I was truly impressed with your skills. Thank you. Tuesday, up at the campground and took in the crisp, clean morning air on a bright, sunny day. Drove to Bar Harbor and savored the taste of our first lobster rolls at a small cafe where there was only one other table of patrons. Who would have thought that my UD t-shirt that I'm wearing right now 
would prompt the response, We're from Dayton. Of course. <laughs> As we walked down the street in Bar Harbor, we came face to face with a wall of license plates, concluding our search for all 50 states on the outside wall of Getty's Down Under. How funny. That was. You've had the nickname of Getty for years. Uh, and of all places to have all 50 license plates just right up there on the wall. Keep walking, Getty. <laughs> then off to, to Acadia National Park. Upon reviewing the trail maps, we chose the precipice. And I guess I didn't really think about what the word precipice meant, did you? No, because that was hardly just a hiking trail, but turned into cliff climbing. When I tell people about my road trip with my father this in 2012, and I tell the story of the precipice, we didn't read up on it, we didn't know anything about it, we just started climbing up it. Right. And this, this hike, which really turned out to be more mountain climbing than anything, Correct, right. I mean, it was just... There, there was even wasn't even a much of a trail. We were just climbing up these huge slabs of rock, um, and, and just it was really, really strenuous. Yeah, like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life physically. What's that? I'm not even waving. I'm just breathing. Is that a good thing? It's better than not breathing. And we hit the half, we hit the halfway point, and we're all proud of uh, of how far we've come. And I don't think we knew really it was the halfway point. No, we did. It was a point where a few different roads and a few different paths intersected. Did we even know it was halfway? Well, I don't know. So we keep going on from there, and I gotta say, you're stopping about every ten seconds, and you're stopping for a good. 30, 40 seconds each time, and just, you got to keep catching your breath. And I'm feeling like my legs are, are tensing up. I feel like I got to keep going. I want to keep going. You keep needing to take breaks, just really every every few seconds. And I tell people, here's the part of the story where I become the asshole. <laughs> oh. And I leave my father behind. And I keep going. Look at you. Hey. Hey. And I, as I keep on going, I get to these points where I'm now like there are wires coming out of the rocks that you gotta climb up. And it's getting harder and harder and harder. And all I'm thinking is, I mean, we both had keys to the car. And I'm imagining you went back to the car. And I'm thinking to myself, thank God you did. Because there is absolutely no way you could do this. Thank God you went back to the car and we parted ways. And I get to this point where I am literally about 10 feet from the top of this mountain. And I can, I can basically see the top, but now I have to go out on this, this cliff, right, basically. There's a ledge. There's a ledge that literally was about maybe, maybe a foot and a half to two feet back. Right. And after that, it's a thousand foot drop. Right. I mean, over that, that's it. That's correct. You're, you're done. Right. And I'm looking at this, and I'm looking over, and I can't even see how far out this ledge goes. I'm just, I'm trying to look beyond, trying to take pictures, trying to see how far, it, and I can't see. And I'm saying, there's no way. There is absolutely no way. But I look up and I say, I'm right there. How can I, how can I come this far and not go all the way? But then I look out and I'm like, no way. And I'm sitting there, and I must have been there for 10, 20, maybe 20 minutes. Really? I must have been there 20 minutes. No just, kidding. Just hanging out, just being like, I don't know what to do. How do I do this? And there's no one around. Nobody is coming up this trail. If Nobody. And all of a sudden, I hear this, I hear this rustling. And then I see this blue ball cap and red Dayton Flyers shirt coming around the corner, and lo and behold, there's my father. And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, what are you doing here? Those were the words. I'm telling you, I'll never forget those words. I, I mean, 
You have bl just you, you blown have, me away were your words. You have blown me away. You absolutely had blown me away. I, I couldn't believe it. And you get up to the top and you say, what are you doing here? And I say, look. And I point to this ledge. And you're just like, oh, you just gotta, you just gotta hug the rock. That's what I said. <laughs> hug the rock. That's you right. get up there and you start hugging this rock, going around this ledge. And I'm looking at you, thinking to myself, my father's about to die. I am about to lose my father. I never and you're just to... and you're just climbing around. Yeah, I wasn't and, concerned at that. And you just oh yeah, that was simple. That yeah. was the easy part. Yeah, that wasn't climbing. That was just kind of going along the ledge. And you get around it, and then you're like, okay, now you do it. And of course, I have to now. And I just and I get up there, and you're like, hug the rock, hug the rock, as I'm going around. And there you are. It's like here, come on, grasshopper. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> I'll be darned. Slow and steady wins the race. Well, all I know is that we then climbed the, the rest of the way to the top together. And that was very, very cool to get to the top together. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We dro then drove on along the coast where we took in the crashing of the waves at Thunder Hall, relaxed with a calm walk in the rain along Jordan Pond, where you educated me on mushrooms, <laughs> enjoyed an excellent dinner at Southwest Harbor, and completed our day with a three-hour drive to Portland, Maine. It's all about those Marriott points as we checked into the Fairfield Inn. There we go. That thunder hole was pretty cool, wasn't it? It was It was really outstanding. When we got there, it was it was this it was this basically this hole where the the water was rushing in. Right. And when we got there, it was pretty low, and within a short matter of time, it really started rising. Well, uh, it, it seemed like there must have been an anticipation that it was about to do that, because there was a crowd of people standing around, kind of waiting for it, I think. And soon enough, the, the waves would crash into that hole and make these huge, huge splashes where we'd all get wet. Right. Wednesday, Two Lights Park was a real treat with its rocky coastline and ominous waves. We traded small stones from the beach, and as I write this, I'm looking at mine on my desk and smiling, and then hiked through a rainforest-like trail with many more mushrooms. That uh, Two Lights Park was pretty great, wasn't it? I thought that was great, too, yes. That yeah. we, we got there, and there was it had rained earlier that day. Yeah, we yeah. almost didn't go. I know. It made it a... It, well, it, just, it gave it a really nice, calm feeling, and yet the waves along the coastline were really ominous. I thought it was amazing. No one else was there besides right, us. Right, right. And I, and do you remember what, why it was called Two Lights Park? Wasn't there wasn't there like a lighthouse? Didn't this used to be an area for um like for wartime or something? Yes, yeah. I think they had like lookout posts there, didn't they? Right. In fact, I, wasn't there still like a, a remnants of the uh, of the I'd almost call it a fort? Yeah. From which the uh, I guess was it World War II? I think it was where there was must have been concern about the United States coastline being attacked. Mhm. Mm wow. We think we're safe here. <laughs> but obviously there was some concern back then. We then rode back to Portland for duck fat fries, outstanding, with aioli, sweet and spicy mustard, and Thai dip. The best was mixing two together. 
Yum. Yum indeed. Well, then it was on to Kenny Buntport, where we stopped for a quick lunch. The guy behind the counter was absent. Boy, was he. His, hot, his eyes hardly moved, and he certainly couldn't have cared less about us being there. As we walked the streets in Kenny Bunkport, we found a candy store. How could you buy just one Starburst, Josh? <laughs> so you guilted me into only one bullseye, one Mary Jane, and two fruit slices. Green and red, I might add. Now on to Salem for a witch hunt. No, a witch house hunt. That's right. Stopped at the Salem Witch Museum to ask for directions. The confused lady passed us off to Jay, who sent us down streets which were the wrong way, one way and provided a map with lots of no-name streets. Finally, with the assistance of a guy on the street, we found the all-black witch house. Frankly, not much to see. It was just a black house. It was just a black house. Now off to Walden Pond. And as you and I discovered, there are two Walden Ponds. After nearly reaching the wrong one, we were sent in the right direction by a policeman with a Massachusetts accent. Walden Pond was a gem on this trip, and we were lucky to have found it. As we pulled into the parking lot, the pond was across the street and out of view. I'm sure we would have walked the wrong way into the woods adjacent to the parking lot to look for the pond. No doubt about it. Upon asking one of the few people around, where's the pond, the reply was, are you serious? Upon crossing the street and walking down a long path, we were greeted by a beautiful picture, Walden Pond, calm and secluded with the sun setting behind the trees. Wow, just enough time for a swim before dark. But still much to do on the upcoming night from hell. A couple of hours of driving to see the Plymouth Rock, rolling into town about 9.30. The rock, now one-third its original size, a hammer and chisel lays next to it, the rock had also broken in half when it had been attempted to be moved. The top half was on display somewhere else for years and then placed back with the bottom half where it now sits, protected by large columns and is lighted throughout the night like a national park. You want a picture of you with the rock? No. Are you sure? I'm sure. You sure? I'm sure. You don't want it? No, thank you. Not a picture of you? No. The rock? No, picture with the rock. You sure? I'm not going down by the rock anyway. Do you like to rock? <laughs> rock and roll. And now a search for dinner. Nothing but pizza in Plymouth. So we started towards Cape Cod. Stopped at Ernie's restaurant. Ugh. I'm getting sick to my stomach as I write this. The tasty chowder was a tease. The chowder was great. Yeah. But then the waitress poured us water from a pitcher sitting on a tray with the cleaning fluid bottle. We then had a long wait, and it's now 10.30 at night, with no one else in the restaurant. I ordered the salmon burger and you the seafood platter, each piece obviously worse than the next, as you spit them back on the plate one by one. No dinner tonight. Okay, where to stay? No vacancy, or a single bed, or two soft pillow top beds. We even went back to the room with one bed, but now that was gone. So the desk, desk clerk called a low-class motel a few miles out of town where a cheap room was available. Now it's past 1 a.m. Beyond exhausted, we got into bed, and I will just say, what was on the sheet was gross. <laughs> Let's end this night, as you slept in the car, and I in a chair laying my head on the table, and all night long a dog yapping, birds crowing, and finally awoke to the sound of 500 women squawking at each other at 6 a.m. There may have only been four women, but they seem to have a lot to squawk about. That was the night from hell. That was the night from hell. So now it's a new day, Thursday. We considered trying to get to the ferry to Martha's Vineyard for the 9.30 departure. 
but when we got to the port, we just couldn't do it. So we looked for a shady, grassy area to get some sleep, and we found it on the grounds of BMI Laboratories. Unfortunately, security kicked us out. That was the last shady, grassy area to be found. With fatigue levels high, the atmosphere was not good. Nope. I took over, and following a nap on a gravel parking lot, we forged on and took the noon sailing to Martha's Vineyard. Hanging out on the deck as we sailed was great, and the fatigue seemed to lift. With such a lack of sleep, I just could not be in a decision-making mode, and I just left it up to you and said, just tell us where we're going, tell us what to do, and I think you made a good choice. Thank you. I think I need to be in front. I don't know if we're going to get this. <laughs> get my nose. Oh wait, we're recording. Arriving at the port, now in Martha's Vineyard, the scene was beautiful and quaint, like a movie set in New England. We chose a restaurant where the whole lobster being served looked incredible. After we were seated, you and I needed to exchange seats so that you could focus on our conversation instead of the hostess. We then strolled the, st the streets of Martha's Vineyard and successfully found a simple navy Martha Vineyard's cap to complement my collection. I had a bit of butter crunch ice cream and you a vanilla shake before boarding our ferry back to Woods Hole in order to head out to Rhode Island, state number seven. But not before I lost my glasses, looked all over, called the restaurant where we had breakfast, and announced they were gone. You were not convinced and bet me a hundred dollars they were in the car. Thank God I owe you a hundred dollars. As it was now late afternoon, we had to choose between Newport or Providence, Rhode Island. I think we made a great choice by taking the short drive to Bowen's Wharf in Newport. What a lovely area of nightlife and stores where we discovered the beautiful art of scrimshaw involving polishing and engraving delicate scenes on animal bone, ivory, or similar surfaces. I bought you a new cigar cutter and left with visions of great stuff at Scrimshaw. We wandered the wharf and landed at the Black Pearl Outdoor Bar for dinner. We schmoozed with the white-haired bartender who runs the restaurant, having been there 30 years. He made you one of the best olive gin martinis with a splash of vermouth, which the bartender said he had not used in a martini in 20 years. And this was served neatly in a short, clear, plastic cup. That's right. So after dinner, we strolled to the back of the pier to settle into whitewashed beach chairs, gazed at the incredibly huge Lucky 7 yacht in the night lights, and slowly smoked cigars over excellent conversation, which I might add had been a mainstay throughout the trip. But before heading back to the car, the visions of Scrimshaw drew us back. Now you bought, for me, a Scrimshaw golf marker, which has reminded me of our trip each time I have used it, and I have, many times. And I bought for Mom a letter opener for her birthday. Okay, one last night and a one-hour drive to Mystic, Connecticut, state number eight, where this last search for a motel was a piece of cake. Hmm. Last day. Breakfast at the Hampton and then off to the Mystic Seaport Museum and Village. Looks cool, but way too expensive for a quick run through. So why not find a back way in for free? Behind the restaurant and through the staff area. We're in! You know, it wouldn't be a road trip if you and I didn't break the law at least once. That's right. It's a, it's a mainstay of road trips <laughs> that we take. There it is. It's top. They, get, they must get air that way. I don't know. Look at that. I'm going to go off here. But really cool stuff and got lots of info from the staff working in the village and on this and on the historic ship. We then returned through the now closed gate to the staff only area. Passing the workers, we commented, 
We just thought we'd go out this way, <laughs> the way we came in. Those that do the crime together spend the time together. And I love spending time with you. Ah, uh, thanks. There we go. Well, that's about it. Heading back to Philly through New Jersey, our ninth state, before getting home. say that Josh is taking us way off the road to Philly. I don't know where we are. He is obviously looking for something as he has papers in his hand and has turned the car around several times. Oh my god, we have stopped on a hill. The car is in neutral. We should be rolling back down the hill, but we are rolling forward. Then as we got out of the car, there is a Cosmo experience with a feeling of pressure pulling me up the hill when it should be downhill. How do you feel? Off balance. Here is a hill and it's rolling up, so we're going to pour some water and see what happens. The water is crawling up the hill. One crawl at a time almost. Almost as if it was an animal. Look out, car's coming. It's moving. It's real. Look that. at that. I see that. Oh, it's really moving. It is crawling up the hill. And one more time, back in the car and facing downhill and neutral, we moved with increasing speed back up the hill. How do you feel? I feel weird and amazed. That was the icing on the cake. A great week with great experiences and I feel we have truly come to know each other even better than before. Thank you Josh for a great trip. Love, Dad. Oh, I love you too, Dad. <laughs> Oh, my God.